Welcome to the Energy Toning Podcast, where I talk about all things energy medicine, consciousness, and how you can live in a higher vibration. Hi everyone, welcome to the Energy Toning Podcast. My name is Liz. It's been a while since I've actually done anything with this podcast, but I thought seeing we're back in lockdown for another 42 days here, probably more, um, I should get on with the publishing. So today's topic is coffee. And I I want to tell you about a little experiment I've I've taken. So recently I decided to quit coffee for 30 days and I'm up to day 28 now. And I've been a coffee drinker for 20 years and there has barely been a day I didn't have a coffee during that time. But throughout most of that time, I had this underlying feeling that coffee probably isn't the best thing I could be drinking. I have felt I'd likely benefit by not drinking at all. I've never been a heavy coffee drinker, usually only two cups a day, but sometimes when I was extra tired, I'd have three cups. But I know I'm sensitive to the stuff, so two to three was enough for me to feel like it's probably not the best thing for me. So the first week, I have to say, was rough. I've tried to quit coffee many times before, but it never felt like the right time to quit. I joined a Quit Coffee Facebook group. It's kind of like uh, an AA group, but for coffee instead. I learned a lot from those who were further along in their journey in this group. And I learned how it took many people six months or more to reach some kind of balance after drinking coffee for decades. But every single one of those people has said they will never go back to it. They say the health benefits they've experienced since quitting far outweighed the feeling of deprivation from not having it. So on the whole, we worship coffee. We have catchphrases like, don't talk to me until I have my morning coffee. And we see slogans on coffee mugs which say, it's Monday, but coffee can handle it. Or it's coffee o'clock. Then we hear ourselves saying, I have a headache. I think I'm, I'm having coffee withdrawals and we go get a coffee. Those who drink coffee daily know what I'm talking about, and it's almost akin to a religion. It's the most socially acceptable drug in the world. But did you know that coffee changes the structure of your brain? Coffee blocks specific receptor sites. Therefore, your brain makes more and more of these receptor sites to compensate. This is why if you've ever tried to quit coffee cold turkey and felt that debilitating crash, it's because all those receptor sites are suddenly wide open, telling your body you are so tired. Did you also know that studies have shown it shrinks the pineal gland in long-term users? This has implications for melatonin production, therefore having a knock-on effect on sleep quality. And then this in turn has a knock on impact on your immune system, therefore probably shortening your life. Pretty intense, right? On the flip side, we're told that coffee has health benefits. But what we're not told is that the health benefits only apply to how wisely we use coffee. For example, the time of day you have it, how much you have, how your unique genetic makeup metabolizes it. For some people, coffee will never be good for them, no matter what health studies are telling us. A healthier approach would be to have regular breaks from drinking coffee. For example, have one week off coffee and then three weeks on. But that routine is unthinkable for most who enjoy their coffee daily. My results so far from quitting for 30 days? Well, one thing I've noticed in a big way is how present I feel when I teach my body balance classes. I feel like I can be myself more, not take myself so seriously and laugh more and therefore connect with my class better. It's not always easy getting up in front of a class week in and week out and remembering everything you're meant to teach. Delivering it in a way that sits well with the class and creating a good experience for them is the aim. But since quitting coffee, I feel like I'm providing that experience better. I'm generally less hungry and annoying muscle twitches have gone because coffee is known to deplete magnesium. And I think I'm generally less reactive to life and, and, and more proactive On the downside, and sorry if this is too much information, constipation has been a really, really uncomfortable side effect. So this is just a further indication of how my nervous system and digestive system has been affected through long-term coffee usage. So some gut digestive tract healing is likely required as well as some extra attention to fibre intake. I'm not saying I'll never drink coffee again, but I do think it's something we should use responsibility.
So one book I would recommend to learn more about it is called Caffeine Blues by Stephen Chernisky. That's definitely an eye-opener to this cult called coffee. So would you take a 30-day challenge and quit coffee to find out what it might do for you? You're not going to know unless you try. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And just before you go, if you would like to take a seven day meditation challenge where you use your voice to bring yourself into a a deeper state of relaxation, feel free to click the link below this and um, have a look. Otherwise, I look forward to chatting to you again another day. Bye for now.